Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this Tuesday edition of MNBL Smite. I am your host, Skepter, and joining me on the broadcast, our local Smite expert, it is none other than Friendzone. Welcome. Hi there, Skep. Dude, I am excited to be on the cast with you, Friendzone. We got one Smite broadcast in so far and have run into a little bit of bad luck, but doesn't seem to be the case going into week number three here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm incredibly excited to see Blaine come out and beat Mato Midai, hopefully, because they are 1-0 and in the season, and I want to keep seeing that undefeated record start to build up. Yeah, I mean, that would definitely be what Blaine fans are looking for. Mato Midai fans on the other side of that. Uh, I don't think they would be so happy with a undefeated start for Blaine, but, you know, 2-0 and uh, looks really nice on the record uh, sheet. I mean, one and one might aesthetically look pleasing because it's the same on both sides, but realistically, it doesn't feel that good to be at 500 win rate. You know, you want to be pushing undefeated status. So Blaine going to be trying to bring the A game tonight, folks. They succeeded a few weeks past against Burnsville, I believe, the team that I saw them best and on league spot. So looking forward to seeing how this one is going to go. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the team you compete for. Friend zone, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Substitute? I do. Well, substitute for the Burnsville team. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Just making sure, you know, give a little bit of a shout out to your local Blaze squad there. Uh, hopefully, you guys can turn that season around. But, you know, I'm excited to see this playing squad, what they have cooked up. You know, I'm sure you got to see a little bit of that gameplay or at least hear about it from some of your teammates. So interested to see how they got that 1-0 and start. And I'm, I'm really looking to see who are the big carry threats uh, on this playing squad. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And I, if I'm correct, I think they had a bye week before that victory. So I am okay. interested in seeing what they've done since then to actually, you know, capitalize and stuff. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, bye week is always looked at as a week as, you know, improvement week. It's like free training week. We can either a look at what other teams are doing around the league, kind of study up game print plan for them, or we kind of focus on ourselves, what we want to do for the week. Uh, something that I think I'd like to see going into this matchup is I want to see some dragging of the jungle camps and kind of leashing them together. That's one of the big features that is added to the jungle in this uh, new new map that we have for conquest. And I don't think we've seen too much utilization of that yet, but it is uh, a much more efficient way to get some levels under your belt early friend zone. Uh, I've had to experience the bad end of that uh, in some <laughs> of my solo efforts, but we'll save that for later. All right. Well, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, with this new map, I'm really glad that it came out when it did, because now we're looking at MNVL freshly introducing Smite to the streams every week. So now we have a new map to play with, too, because that old one was kind of kind of a little disgusting, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, you know, everything has its time in the sun, and uh, there's times when it's a due for an update. And, you know, Smite, they just shook out the rug a little bit. They freshened things up, and now things feeling nice on the map. Uh, I love looking around aesthetically amazing, you know, jungle camps, feeling good, everything looking good. I like some of the newer gods that they have introduced so far, Manticorus being one of them, and Surtur, the other old-school fire giant for some of the OGs sticking around that have been around the Smite scene, I'm sure you are uh, quite familiar with that. I think he's been some fun, man. I've actually played a couple games of him, dude. The ultimate is pretty dope, turning into a giant magma comet, you know, coming down from the heavens. It's a, it's quite uh, an entertaining time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Burnsville putting him to good use last week with that mid to oh, late yeah. game stuff that was going on with him. So, yeah. Wow, that mm -hmm. was something, man. I mean, good thing we got to interview said Surter player, uh, dropped almost 20 elims in that game, was just... <laughs> I mean, the most DPS in the server by far, you know, that full damage build was uh, something to see and something that I'm going to remember for quite some time. I uh, don't think I could pull it off to those capabilities, but I will definitely admire from afar and cheer, uh, you know, from the sidelines. That's that's my place here. But mm -hmm. overall, man, excited to get into this. Mata Midai folks trying to chase uh, a victory here, trying to get onto the board, uh, you know, down 0-1, definitely don't want to fall into an 0-2 hole. Uh, you're fighting for playoffs. Granted, it is early on, right, week three, but, you know, it is, uh, it's only harder if you don't find that kind of even uh, win to tie up your season right now. So any, uh, any final things that you want to kind of preview the audience on before we get into it, Frenzo? 
Uh, not really. I just really hope that Mato Midai can win this game and kind of sort of balance out what they're going to. Because like you said, if they start out 0-2 on the season, it's going to be kind of hard for them to sort of dig out of that and be, you know, a good caliber for the playoffs. For sure. Yep. Definitely want to avoid O2s at all costs, folks. We are getting our God Select going quite shortly here, but looking forward to it. Uh, you know, we can talk a little bit. Fans uh, getting things underway right here, right now, friend zone. Thank you all for your patience. But now it is time to kick back, relax. And uh, one of those new gods we were talking about, Manticorus, getting banned away early. I like that. You know, that's that's something I do in a uh, Rainbow Six Siege a lot. Just just to kind of troll the other team a little bit. Just take out all the new people so they can't have any fun with them. And I believe Thanatos banned away from our red squad in Mata Midai. Mm -hmm, yep, and Cthulhu is going to be banned or picked as a ban from Blaine. And is that Hermes right there? That is that's actually Mercury. Mercury, okay. Mercury or Hermes. I knew it was one of the two. I just had to double check. A shot wrong on that one. Amir getting banned out. Common Guardian pick there. I love Amir. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's actually one of my favorite tankier uh, gods to play. Mm -hmm. And with him being one of the beginner gods, he's really um really kind of used all over the place. Ooh, and that's Amuz and Cobb. I know that one. Sheesh. He's tough to miss. He's tough to miss. AMC. Blaine's first pick is going to be Nike here. All right. Okay. It's like. Yu Huang. Now, what are you seeing out of these early locks so far? Front zone. King um, Arthur over... coming out. Yep. King Arthur. We got Fafnir. So I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of defensive players coming up first to pick here. Um, I'm really liking the King Arthur pick, though. He is someone who you definitely do not want to be going one on one against. Ooh, Hebo. Oof. Okay. Ooh, the Cerberus this pick. Is... We saw that in our last Smite stream as well. Bring some heavy engage, able to mm -hmm. stir up the team fight. Yep, Cerberus is definitely holding off those lanes quite well. I'm interested to see second wave of bands coming through here. Hades going to get taken on out. I believe that's Baba Yaga as well. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side. Final band coming out. Agni. Inserter. Inserter. Ah. No they fun know. with the new gods. <laughs> <clears throat> Can't blame him though, you know. Ooh, the Thor pick coming out. I like it. I believe that was an insta lock too. So Slayer knew yeah, going Apollo. into that. Apollo yeah, too. Slayer, <laughs> Slayer one track mine on the Thor. Mm -hmm. The Apollo lock in as well. Okay. Not a bad lock. You know, I'm interested with these two comps. Friend zone, go ahead and break it down. Tell me which team composition you're favoring here and why. I'm interested uh, to hear it. I'm liking Monobita is actually with um, King Arthur being able to solo stuff on his own. I personally pick Apollo as my favorite ADC. So I like that. And then them coming in heavy with um, the Yu Huang and Cerberus is going to really work in their favor, I think. Okay. So, interested to see how it's going to play out. I like the Apollo pick as well. Is a fun god to have on the server for us today. Looking forward to this best of one. Folks, we are going to have a very short delay break here. Just got to give a couple of minutes for delay, and we will get on into the game and get gameplay delivered to you guys very soon. We're going to head to a very short break, but when we come back, we will be loading into the Smite Conquest to get this action underway. Stay tuned for more MNVL action after the break.
Here at Concordia St. Paul, you will have the opportunity to earn a degree, make lifelong friendships, and play a game you love on an esports scholarship. For more information, visit csp.edu slash esports. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting right into the action. So let's load on in to the conquest as we have Fafnir hanging out over near the health camp. Checking mm -hmm. on in on the dwarf. Yeah, but it looks like the other team is going to be splitting 3-2 between the other camps on their side. I'm interested to see where they space out once the game starts. So you have Apollo teamed up with can't really quite tell i can kind of see it looks like it's king arthur that is definitely king arthur perfect all right looks like those two are going to be responsible for that side of the map so you have cerberus on the opposite side Starting out pretty normal. Trying to drag over some jungle camps. Getting the leash going. 
nothing wrong with this start, just speeding things up, being more efficient, working together, and sharing yep. some XP. Mm -hmm. This is what I... I didn't really see a lot of this last week, so it's good that... I didn't either, man. This is what we're missing. Mm -hmm. After you're falling pretty low, though. Might see a recall here right after he gets... Yep, there we go. All right, so gonna get the buff, head back to base, regain that HP before heading on over to the duo lane. Apollo already over with the mana buff. And now King Arthur helping him out, actually. So a bit of a split lane, it seems. Yeah, it looks like it to me. Um, Nike is gonna be having a tough time all the way over there. She's gonna be alone all game. Going up against King Arthur just on its own is going to be a challenge. But with Apollo there too, that is big damage. Oh, good engage though in the 1v2. Going for it, not ah. going to happen. King Arthur silencing that. But so Thor, close. quick on the gank, finding some big damage, and it's a double kill found from Slayer. And Thor is already at level 3 perfection right there. That's what I call the clean up crew right there. My goodness, yeah. Thor busting out the mop bucket and cleaning up. Very low HP target and picking up the buff for that nicely. So good on the Thor. Some extra gold in his pocket. And that is a god that you kind of fear putting some kills on him early. Because guy can pack the damage. Most definitely. Uh, early game, I'm definitely expecting Thor to do a lot of the heavy lifting for the team here. But he is going to be taken out right now. <laughs> yeah, it goes down there. Sometimes that's just the way it goes, you know. You, you can't always play it deathless. Yeah, you know, the early game is the time to die if there ever was one. But these, are, these teams are all pretty even level right now. So it's not going to affect them too badly. Big kill found on the other side. Cerberus goes down. As Seraphim going to pick up one... For themselves on the blind side, so Hunter getting a, a pickup, and it's always good when some gold going on the back of that carry. Mm -hmm, yes, sir. Looks like Nike is going to be having a tough time over there when V2ing the Apollo and King Arthur again. She is holding her own, surprisingly, though. Hope Thor is going to be coming in for a little bit of backup, though. Yeah, yeah Nike very low HP. Thor swooping on in for a gank. Nike trying to dodge out to safety, gonna go up top, a knock up, and a shakedown. Level 5, and that's a little bit of an outplay coming in for the Blaine squad there. Nice 2 for 0. Mm -hmm, most definitely, yeah. Thor definitely knew that he had to come in and help, and he came in at the perfect moment to catch Apollo. Ooh, Ooh my goodness. Okay. Okay, Cerberus, we see you over there. Picking up a double. 3 and 1 now. We're the three-headed devil dog. It's hitting level five there too. My goodness, the Cerberus is off to a big, huge start here. That's uh, that's kind of scary. Just a three-headed dog got three kills at three-ish minutes into the game, about so you know, a whole lot of threes. Not in favor of blaine but five to five on the kills so things not too bad gold lead just a little bit in favor of blaine right now friend zone mm -hmm. yeah just a little but you know they can easily wow, take it so back much damage oh my goodness oh okay. my almost too easy coming through for yeah, nike pretty... as they improve to three one and two pushed a little far in on the tower there but you know i like the effort i like the the attempt that was made there not bad, yeah, not bad. Trying to get some damage down. Pushed out a little bit far. Nike making use of the timing now. A double team in for the Cerberus. Going to try to start to head on out, but getting tracked down for now. Fafnir trying to make quick work of the Cerberus. Finally going to go down. Fafnir, the recipient of that kill. Cerberus was trying to put the moves on both of them, but the ankle breaking was not enough to shake them both. Trying to be aggressive here in the mid lane. Trying to track down his target. Not going to be the case. As we quickly shift over to a one versus two. 
a level seven Nike. This is a tough target to fight. Both these players at level four. I don't fancy their chances here, friend zone. My goodness, so Apollo. much damage. Apollo's already done. Uh -oh. Nike is King Arthur that. trying to pack in a punch. Well, he still can, but quickly healing up is the Nike. A three level advantage. Oof, this is not working out well on that side yeah. for King Arthur and Apollo. It's swaying it so heavily in the side of the Nike. Almost certainly going to pick up this King Arthur here. And there it is. Now on a rampage. And this Nike is going berserk. My goodness. Everywhere else on the field, it is pretty evenly split. But that side is just unobtainable for Matamida right now. Fafnir in his ultimate dragon form right now. See him duking it out with the Cerberus, but now back into the fray we go. Two versus one. Low HP bar. We're gonna get out in the nick of time. Played it on a knife's edge though. Yeah, but I feel like keeping that Cerberus back is gonna be pretty crucial for this side over here. Pretty low on mana here. Cerberus trying to back on up. Low on HP, getting chipped even lower. He's going to be back in time, though. His backup is only level 2, so I'm interested in seeing how this plays out here. It's stunned. Falls back even more. I'm wondering why Cerberus doesn't recall at this point, honestly. Yeah, you'd think that, but, you know, maybe just trying to make sure teammate is okay sitting at level 3, quite underleveled. That is valid, but he's going to get stunned again. He has no mana. He has little health. Trying to chip away at that Bastion. It's quite low. Trying to cash in on some extra gold. Fafnir's going to recall. Wow, Cerberus is so low, man. I mean, I like that Cerberus is just still pushing up and taking those little tiny fights while they can. Mikey back into the 1v2 now. A four-level lead on these two opponents. And this is just not a fair fight, friend zone. My goodness, absolutely shredding the Apollo every chance Nike gets. I think Arthur is going to fall between two. Trying to mix it up, but still fighting a losing battle. Or what seems to be HP going to drop. And yeah, I mean, this Nike is on pace for dropping uh, some Poseidon numbers that we saw <laughs> a week ago. My goodness, yeah. I'm gonna take it over to this side now. Oh, there's a killing spree. Cerberus is gonna come in, try to hopefully 1v2 these people. I mean, look at this fight going down between the Fafnir and the Cerberus. So much damage on the Cerberus trying to flee out of this one, realizing he's not feeling so good in this 1v1. It's getting slowly drained though. Oh, middle tower push. Yu Huang is falling victim to the Thor. Barely escaping with a little bit of health. Oh my goodness, wow. he actually got away. Somehow not dropping. It's a miracle, but Nike gonna make sure that those miracles don't last too much longer. My goodness, taking level... out Apollo. Oof. Level difference already is astounding. It's... Yeah, man. I'm scared for these players. But. I am going to applaud Nike, actually, for knowing to prioritize the Apollo every time. Target prioritization on point. Thor very low on HP. And not going to make it through that. My goodness. Man, oh man. What is it? 9, 1, and 2 now for the Nike? Level 11? Scary. Yeah, that is not... I mean, the highest person on Monomi Dice team is level 9, but they are also not in that lane, so that is definitely a bit of a problem for Monomi Dice. I would think they would hopefully be talking about switching something up right now. Wow. Oh, the minions will take them out, so Cerberus able to find a trade on that last elim. Not bad, but right now for Monomi Dice, down about 5,000 gold friend zone. I want to know what they got to do to start fighting the way back into this game. Uh, they just have to start 
getting those little fights in more. They, the Nike is absolutely destroying Apollo and King Arthur on that side. I would think that you would want to send someone over there for some reinforcements right about now to try and get some of those levels back. Oh my goodness, level 12 Nike. Okay. Oof. And they just keep dropping. Another one bites the dust. Yeah, Doesn't matter is... who comes over here. Mm -hmm. No, it's, they're all getting just absolutely fed into this Nike right now. 10, 1, and 2, man. Impressive to say the least. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they can get something mounted here for this mid-game starting right about now. This is normally when we start seeing more of those bigger team fights and those jungle items really starting to come into play here. Yeah, we're reaching the 11 minute mark, folks. 23 kills to seven in favor of Blaine. Most of that lead on your screen right now. It has been the Nike. The player being beater has been showing up and showing out here for the MNBL masses. I am loving this performance from Nike right now, honestly. Going in this one versus two, and that is a Oof. dead Lyles. Big, big damage from Hebo there. Yeah, Thor softens up the target. Hebo falls in the waveform to finish it off. And an icy limb found. Wow. My goodness. Blaine adding to it, man. Yep. Thor on a rampage. We got this Nike going unstoppable here. I. I am impressed with what Blaine is doing right now, honestly. Yeah. I gotta agree with you, man. I think that what we're seeing is uh, a reason why Blaine is 1-0, you know? This team is playing good, and there are threats across the map for mm -hmm. the team. Almost a 10k goal difference that you have a two-tower lead on Matomirai here. But there is still time for Matomirai to come back in this game. Oh, yeah. Definitely still time. Not out of it by any means as we see the 1v1 going back and forth. Cerberus now starting to not fancy his chances in this one. Like continuing to push forward. Oh, maybe. One more Cerberus. auto attack could do it. Misses once, but we'll find it as Cerberus turns back into the fight. Now we head back into the one versus two. Nike at level 14 and friend zone. We know how this one's gonna play out. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Targeting the Apollo right now. No matter what King Arthur does, it's not enough to stop this Nike. Uh, King Arthur trying to fight tooth and nail, but it's only a matter of time for Nike to drop either HP bar. Not receiving much damage either. With this level lead, going back in for it one more time. Gonna drop King Arthur right about now. Gonna try to drop some turret aggro here. And now caught behind this tower. Things in a bit of an interesting position. Apollo goes forward, but is this a fight that you can handle? Ooh, so far, yes. not looking likely. I don't know. I mean, Apollo just needs to really change his abilities correctly here, and he could definitely take down this Nike. We'll have to see Apollo trying to find the finishing touch. But Nike doing so much damage. Apollo can't get out in time. And Peter improves to 12, 1, and 2. Ooh, my goodness. Oh, Cerberus is going to clean up a kill over here, too. Take that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, oh, man. I mean, what an action-packed game. Blaine approaching the 30 Elim mark. Oh, Yu Hong is going to be... Struggling here in the mid lane. He's got three on him. Can he escape in time? No, Hebo takes him down. Friends. Good elimination coming out from Hebo now onto this tier two turret in mid lane. Trying to set up a push for Matamidai's middle Phoenix. Oh, Chaos Tower gonna take that out. So, That's a little bit of a misplay, but nothing too harmful. More of a little bit of a giggle probably coming out in the comms, if anything. Most definitely. And just like that, is already coming back into the fight. Uh oh, another one? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? People are forgetting the towers aren't friendly. Cerberus I... trying to back his teammate up here. 
can do some work. Cerberus has definitely invested in having a massive health bar to chip into. Yeah, I mean, you can see it. That HP bar does not play around. You can hit him as much as you like. Ooh, going for the ultimate. It does hit it, but it is not enough for the Cerberus. Yeah, I mean, you see how tanky that Cerberus is. Thor gonna find one there, but it is Nike who picks off the Apollo. Now at 13 Elims. Man, oh man, dude, this Nike is just ridiculously fed. Level 16 now. Closest level is the Cerberus at 12. For the side of Matamidai and the Deicide coming out. Oh. Blaine making it happen. I am loving what I'm seeing from Blaine here. They've officially crossed the 10k gold lead mark. They still have all of their towers up in decent condition. And they are just pushing as hard as they possibly can into Matamidai. Yeah, so far so good. Blaine coming into this one with a clear game plan. You can see the gold difference plus XP difference, folks. It has been a Blaine show through and through. Running out of towers on the Matamidai side. And, uh, you know, down on the gold as well. So, desperately looking for picks? Or, I mean, you know, what's the main game plan to get back into this friend zone? Um, honestly, I would feel like it would be playing for picks. I would also feel like it would be trying to mount up enough XP to kind of get leveled up to go for that gold fury at this point right now. Oh, Thor drops down on King Arthur. And just like that, King Arthur is no more. Yu Hong up next on the dinner plate. And it seems as though Blaine are making mincemeat of Matamidai. My goodness. I mean, the highest amount of deaths on this Blaine team is only at Four compared to Monami Diet, which is oof, we've had someone Oh my. I can't I can't I can't keep track of it, Hall. Skep, there's we're going we have one person going fourteen and one on Blaine. We have eleven and two and eight and four. I know Thor's catching up. I mean everybody's fighting and putting up MVP numbers. It's like who do you give the gold star award to here, friend zone? You got so many great candidates. It's gotta be Nike though, because of the sheer dominance we've seen start to finish. Coming out in a one V two lane. To absolutely just dismantle your opponents like we've seen, it's been uh, S-tier gameplay from Peter. Yep, every move Nike has made so far has been S-tier perfection. Man, and we're approaching 40 kills for the side of Blaine Cerberus, doing what he can. But getting chipped away by the Hunter. Trying to jump away, trying to get out of harm's way, but I think it's only a matter of time. My goodness, and, and there we go. 40 on the board. Oof. My goodness, King Arthur, you have some courage going into this fight. I do applaud him still trying to push on this Nike and get something going for his team. This is not the 1v1 that you want to take if you're the King Arthur biggest challenge on the opposition and now Fafnir finding a loom target in the jungle trying to find the last swipe of the hammer the short little arms not helping his range going for it not hitting it what's going on are we there no it's okay. right there oh thank there you. we go thank you that was starting to make me nervous I was about to reach out myself and finish the job with a hammer hit my goodness what a game though man yeah, Maybe not. A... You're good. Go for it. Oh, all right. This is, a, this is an incredible watch. I'm loving everything this Nike's doing. And Thor coming in to help his team out. Trying to get something going on the Cerberus yeah, here. Cerberus is so tanky. Yeah. Down, down five levels, but still pretty tanky to deal with this for the time being. Not looking like it's a 1v1 he wants to stick around for, though. Thor, sticky. Not letting him go. He's staying on him. And gonna go ahead and take out the three-headed dog. The rampage and Thor is almost ten levels ahead of Whoa, his Whoa! King combat. Arthur drops Hebo. That's there a big go. Elam and Nike gonna take out Apollo again. He's going seventeen and one right now and is already level nineteen. Dude, look at Thor, level seventeen to a level eight. Oof. I mean, what is going on here? These fights are just not working out for Matamidai. 
Yeah, not at all. Thor trying to track this one down. Fafnir finds the rampage. Thor adds to it. And now, only over 20 minutes into the game, it is a 53.5k gold lead to 38.5. I mean, dude, these margins are absurd. Blaine showing some dominance and trying to put a stamp on week number three, Smite, and improve to 2-0. Yep, we've got that. Both those middle towers already down. The one on the left side is almost gone. I feel like if the Cerberus goes down, it might be one final push to get that tower down. Unstoppable, so Unstoppable for the Thor. I mean, man. This Blaine team is just nuts. Yeah, they are capitalizing on every opportunity they have gotten so far. Now, another 2v1. Terribaldus and Thor going on in for this one. Trying to chop up the opposition. Nike back into it. 1v1 v King Arthur. We've seen this one play out a few times today. Uh, just a couple. The 13. King Arthur's 20. getting closer. Yeah. The gap is closing. It is definitely closing. They have gotten a couple kills since then, but this Nike is just absolutely decimating this King Arthur right now. King Arthur trying to dip on out. Nike trying to track him down though. Doesn't want him to get on out for free. Jumping on into the middle of this fight. And it seems to be a Blaine thunderstorm out here in the mid lane, right outside of the Matamidi Phoenix. Nike jumping back into the fray. And now trying to stagger their way into the fight, but it's not going their way. Blaine gonna take out these Matamidi defenders and look to take out this middle Phoenix. They are mounting one heck of a push here right now. Trying to defend, but going in one at a time is not the way to fight. But all of a sudden, a double kill swinging things back into Monomedi favor just for a few brief moments. Yeah, that is only Nike's second death of the game, but she is going to be out for the next 40 seconds. So hopefully Monomedi can capitalize on their big player being down right now and get a little something going here before they come back. Massive pick there to find friend zone at the end of that. Overstaying the welcome just a tad and ends up paying a big price for it. So now heading back, trying to regather yourself and get ready for what is to come. A little bit of a push coming the way of Monomita though, grouped up. So starting out with the right idea, push it on in, but Hebo goes forward with the Thor. Team fight going well in favor of Blaine to kick this one out. Thor falling low on HP. Will get taken out by King Arthur. Now, Hebo next up into the fight. Gets knocked up for the time being. Ultimate gonna drag him back into the mix. Trying to get safety under the tower. Back into the fight now is Nike. Should be able to clean this one up, Frenzo. We'll see in the 1v4. Knock up is in. Big damage one on the back line. Yu Huang is down. Fafir is into the fray with the dragon form. This has got to be a fight going the way of playing. Most definitely. They are just absolutely getting rid of the entire Matamidi team that is in mid right now. Oh, 3v1 happening over here. Already they are done for. My goodness, this playing team is just absolutely wow. unstoppable right now. In 60 eliminations, man. This is... Just fierce gameplay coming out of Blaine, showing us a reason why they started out 1-0, a reason why they are pushing to continue to stay undefeated at 2-0 here, friend zone. Yeah, I am incredibly excited to see what Blaine is going to do the rest of the season. Honestly, if this is these are their first two games. They've won both of them, and I'm assuming the one before went exactly like this, which is only a sign of good things to come for this Blaine team. Apollo just gets absolutely destroyed by the Thor. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's... Pyromancer are going to go down in favor of Blaine. Heading on over to the Fire Giant, I believe now. Maybe setting their sights on that and looking to potentially close out. I mean, the gold lead is massive. A big kill, though, going the way of Lyles. One of the few players on the Matamidi squad able to string together some elims here, friend zone, and make it a little bit interesting. 
Eh, just a little bit, but once this fire giant goes down, I feel like Blaine is gonna mount another massive push on this Matamidai team. Uh oh, Slayer getting bested by the fire giant, now getting the damage they needed from Hevo to hopefully push them over the line. But another one drops Fafnir now and really struggling to kill this fire giant. Nike trying to have the damage, 300 HP, 200 on the fire giant. Blue team gets the fire giant, just barely King Arthur almost stole that one away. And that would have been something absolutely absurd. It cost them four out of the five members on the team. I would not consider that a worthwhile attempt on the Not at all. Right, a good idea, but at what cost? You're missing so much damage from the Hebo, and now it really gives Matamidai a chance to push. Let's see what they do here. They are at the Phoenix's doorstep. They are knocking. The only two defenders that are there are barely able to hold off this Matamidai team right now. Quite a stark difference in the eliminations, but with some costly decision making. Four players going down, only one player having the fire giant buff. Yes, the team We're is going in. for the ultimate. Going up top, let's see the view. We go on in, straight onto the back line. And this is so much damage. The level discrepancy is not to be trifled with. This is, and Apollo goes and down. This fight's too. in the bag. Oh my goodness. And just like that, all of Mato Midai is down. And Blaine is pushing up through mid. I imagine we are going to see a Titan push right about now. 20 seconds on the first death timer. Now down to 15. It's going to be tight. Blaine not wasting any time. Rushing up mid lane. Got to burn through a Phoenix. And then it's on to the Titan. We'll see if they have the means. Five seconds now on Fuzzy Shark. Large Potato to follow. Okay, it's dropping quickly. The two biggest players are going to be in at the last point here. Here we go. Titan is under attack, but... Doesn't seem to be a full-on commit on the push as a fight going the way. Cerberus goes in early, gets taken out. And if they stagger their death timers here, friends, on this could be the end. This Eight is team fight underway. Not at all looking good. Apollo's going to lose half his health already and falls uh -oh. down. Right now. They start to drop. Matamidai only have three players remaining. Lane trying to make the finishing touches of this master class as they approach 70 elims in this one. That's the divider. Nike finds her 21st in this one. My goodness, Lane they love moments there. away. Fafner did recall the base though, so it looks like the yeah. push will not come from this set of deaths. Yep. What an explosive team fight though. Blaine finding so many eliminations friend zone. But Mato Mirai surprisingly holding their own there. Cerberus and Apollo both are back in the fight now. Nike's the only one. They're still holding her own, however, though. Uh, just keeping these minions at bay, keeping the pressure in their face. And now teammates regrouping with the Nike. We'll see how long they want to kind of hang out. They're missing some key assets in their Hunter and the Thor, but Nike not caring about those odds, going in for the fight regardless. HP bars dropping quite low. Cerberus taking so much damage. We'll get healed up a tad. Odds now starting to look potentially in favor of Monomedi. Cerberus staying alive somehow, but not to be. Apollo finds his first of the game. 28 minutes is a little bit late into the game to be getting your first kill, but it did come at the key point of keeping Blaine at bay for their push this time. Not like bad. Adamidai trying to fight back, trying to keep these Blaine attackers at bay. Mm -hmm. Just seems to be a matter of time. Yeah, just 30 minutes into this game, we're already at 72 and 19 going in favor of Blaine with a 15k gold difference. Mato Mirai can still come back from this, but it is going to be incredibly tough for them to do so. We're trying to track this one down, trying to take cover under the Phoenix. Nice Elims coming out for the Nike. Now trying to push on in. That is two, make it four deceased. It's only Cerberus left. 
and now focus gonna be on the Titan. Blaine gonna be making quick work of it, and while Monomidai put up a fight, it was not to be a 2-0 start to the season, almost certainly on the horizon for Blaine, unless Monomidai have last ditch efforts. Looks like they're going for the track. ultimate. Gonna and he's going to ult out to safety, it looks like. How did they save that? I am stunned, to say the least, right now. But the Snikey is still deep in their base. Oh, Only two away. <laughs> Three defenders now back in for Mata Midai. Soon to be the rest of the team joining them. Was that a little bit of split focus from Blaine not fully targeting the Titan? Or was that just not having the damage for the time? I feel like Blaine was maybe too focused on trying to get that Cerberus before he went back into the Fountain. And that might have been what caused less damage to go to the Titan. Always a possibility. Had the stats before taking out the Titan. I've heard the comms before. Yep. Fafnir is going to be taking the damage camp though, and looks like the whole team is going to be going off against each other right now. Good fight underway here. Nike Dalvin into the back line. Fafnir up into the mix as well. Trying to take on Apollo. Dropping back for King Arthur. Thor takes him out there. Now trying to push forward. 50 seconds. Death timer's getting very long as we are breached 30 minutes into this. Yep, if Apollo, it, low on HP, gonna uh, drop. There we go. If Monomidai starts losing any more people, this is definitely gonna be one final big push for Blaine and the game will be over. It's not looking pretty. They gotta stay alive. Dragon form in for Fafnir. Diving on in, gonna take out the Phoenix first. And now Blaine setting their sights forward. Gods dropping by the second. Titan back under siege. This time seeming to be the end of this onslaught. It's looking like it. Fafnir is gonna duck out to safety a little bit. The Titan is incredibly low. Goes for the recall, but his teammates are gonna take it out. They finish with 79 elims. It is 24 for the Nike. 23 for Thor. I mean, dude, some absurd numbers coming out in week number three. Smite. Talk about a game. I think the final death toll there was 79 to 23 in flavor of Blaine. Oof. That was that man, was a that beating. Hurt. Yeah. Yeah, man, that hurts. 73 Elims. That is something fierce. Those are numbers that you cannot scoff at. You cannot joke about of uh, Blaine really showing up in that duo of Nike and Thor, man, the bruiser squad coming through today. Yeah, as I said early game, the cleanup crew was there for Blaine. Yeah, man, those two, I mean, we saw all game, right? Nothing changed. Game plan was pretty much the same. They got ahead, they played their game plan, and they just let it speak for itself. Whatever they wanted to do, that Blaine squadron was making it happen. And, uh, you know, overall, I, I, I really thought they played well today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with that Nike going one and two or one V two the whole game against yeah. that King Arthur and Apollo. Basically, from that first set of kills, the game was basically over for them. Yeah, really, not not many high points for Monomedi to fight back in. It's tough once uh, players of that caliber get a lead; they keep themselves ahead for the remainder of it. So, gonna have to go back to the VOD. Gonna have to study up and uh, clean up where they can before they get ready for Week Four action. We are going to head to a break, folks. We appreciate you being here. We are going to try to work out an interview. If so, we will be back very soon with said interviewee and uh, a little bit more MNBL action. Stay tuned. More info after the break.
Here at Concordia St. Paul, you will have the opportunity to earn a degree, make lifelong friendships, and play a game you love on an esports scholarship. For more information, visit csp.edu slash esports. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the wrap-up of our Tuesday broadcast. We are joined in the interview desk by none other than Beater, who was playing the Nike. Beater, what a performance, man. Uh, you know, I just want to start out with asking you, what, what's the mindset going into lane one versus two? Well, in Smite, you always have to be prepared for every eventuality and... In honesty, in that lane, I was expecting to get uh, teamed up on at least a couple times. But um, in a situation where it's 2v1, you actually have a partial advantage because experience is split. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I okay. was feeling confident. Yeah, I mean, dude, your play, uh, to be honest, reeked of confidence. You could smell it across the map, good sir. You were engaged in 1v2. Uh, I think you gave the fans a show, and you played it nicely. Thank you very much. Yeah, most definitely. Zone, what do you got for them? Well, Sorry. to build off giving you a show, um, with you going 1 and 2, I noticed that your whole team was kind of really going for kills over objectives. Was that part of your guys' game plan? Um, it was at the start there because of a couple passives in our group there that would benefit from getting more kills in the start. Um, specifically Nikes. Mm -hmm. All right, but I, late game, though. You guys barely went for the gold oh. tree. You went for Fire Giant once. Late game, I think we kind of just got too heated in the moment and forgot about some of our objectives there. Um, but I think that uh, for further matches, we should be focused more on getting the objectives so that uh, the enemy team can't suddenly... Uh, surprise us with that yeah i mean you know this is a little bit off script but things did get a little bit dicey for your guys's fire giant take you lost four out of your five members and there was a sliver of a chance that king arthur was gonna get a steal on the fire giant 
I know myself, a little bit of sweat was trickling down the back of my neck for you guys. Uh, but overall, you know, a really calm and collected game plan. I want to ask uh, Beater, who is the primary shot caller for you guys on this Blaine squad? Um, I'm technically the strategy leader here, but I'd say that our support, Cody, or sorry, DM, would be okay. the like main person to go to for uh, some of our plays because, well, as a support, he is meant to be there and make sure that we can survive. For sure. Yeah, not a bad uh, read on that at all. Friend zone, any more questions for the All-Star Beater? Yeah, um, I've just got one last one for you guys. So with you starting 2-0 and on the season, do you guys tend to stick to the same team comps or do you guys kind of kind of switch your roles around from week to week to kind of see what works best? Um, we mostly switch around in order to make sure that we can't like lose our edge on any of the gods that we play as. Um, helps us uh, avoid the draft bans as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Not a bad strategy at all. Blades seeming like they have it under wraps right now. 2-0 and start. Peter, I want to give you this last little bit of time as a, a bit of a shout-out or, uh, you know, give your teammates a holler, anybody that you want, friends, family. This time is yours, good sir. All right. I'd like to primarily shout-out uh, Slayer for, well, sticking with me since the start. He's been playing Smite with me for a long time. And I'd like to shout out the rest of my team for sticking with me in this and uh, playing well. I'm glad we could play. For sure. Yeah, we're happy to have you. And thanks for joining us on the interview desk. Uh, Peter, you did a great job. We're looking forward to seeing you in the future. Yeah, thank you very much. For sure. Friend zone, that was going to do it. A 2-0 and start to the season for Blaine, man. I mean, they came in, they conquered, they dropped 73 eliminations. Your closing thoughts on a crazy Tuesday MNBL action. I am incredibly looking forward to see what Slayer and Beater do as they were the two big kill numbers contributing towards that 79. And I'm just really looking forward to see what Blaine does as a whole for the rest of the season. Yeah, me too, man. I mean, that duo put up about 50 of the combined 73 elims. Those are pretty disgusting numbers if you want me to just use uh, that kind of vocabulary. Overall, though, it was a treat of a broadcast, folks. We appreciate all of you for stopping by the MNVL Twitch. Myself and Friendzone are going to be back on the mics tomorrow night, live at 5 with MCAT and some Valorant action that you won't want to miss. So, Tune back in tomorrow, folks. We're going to have that FPS action coming your way. For now, though, it is goodbye. Have a great rest of your Tuesday night, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow with Valor in action.